Hi everybody, welcome to Wednesday and the introduction of chapter 13, marketing. Um, it's really the subject that helps feed the till. If you, even, even if you've got something as basic as a coffee shop, you have to convince people to have coffee at your coffee shop instead of the competitors, right? Uh, tires, uh, tables, I'm where I'm sitting here, I got a table, I got a desktop PC, I've got a printer, Casa del Gallagher's all tricked out with the latest and the greatest, but what differentiates that printer from another printer? Probably not a whole lot, except marketing got my attention. And if the printer works, which fortunately that one has, uh, onward we go with it. And um, so you need to use an effective marketing campaign for differentiation, to gain market share, and to prevent other people from imposing on your turf, so to speak. You should have a marketing campaign for yourself. The Gallagher brand, that's a luxury you can afford. <laughs> Why settle for less, okay? So, anyway, I'll leave it there. By the way, any of you get into the cannabis business, I don't want to see anybody on TV 10 years from now saying, oh yeah, man, everything I learned about Bob, I learned from Gallagher. <laughs> don't frame it that way. You can, you're, if there's anything you've learned in this class, you can sort of spin things to, um, to give one perception versus another. So, um, But I hope you do well. I you know, hope you make lots of money. It is legal and it is a growing business. So um, anyway, today we're going to get into a couple of basic fundamentals of marketing. And then uh, on Monday, we'll wrap up the chapter. Now, today we're going to keep this less than 10 minutes, this video. And because as you saw in the announcements, there's a lot of material there, right? Okay, well, this video will be 10 minutes. One of the other videos is only four minutes. And then the other two combined are about four minutes. So, you know, that's about 18 minutes worth of videos. Um, and then the material in between to read. So that's lengthy, granted, but everything should be enough to consume within 40 minutes. And then we can convene on Zoom at a regular time. Um, so basically, I'm going to start with something in the textbook that is, of course, going to be on the quiz and the exam. And it's a section called The Evolution of Marketing. And it talks about the different phases of marketing over time. There's been lots of changes. Now, when people first set foot on North America up to about 1900, that era was called the production era. Okay, And really, marketing really didn't factor into it because... In that era, um, you only made things that were needed. Necessities were produced in that era. And so um, food, shelter, um, tools, transportation possibly, those things were all done during the production era. So there really wasn't any wasted production on discretion, what we call discretionary products. Now that changed uh, in what the book describes as the selling era, which started uh, really around the turn of the last century, but really came into vogue around 1920 after World War I, and then continued on to the start of World War II, which was 1940, about a 20 year window there. And the selling era was, was all of a sudden, products started to come out that, uh, went from being have-to-haves to, to would-like-to-haves, washing machines, um, dryers, you know, instead of having to scrub things in your sink and hang it out a clothesline, um, now you could toss them in a washing machine, flip them in the dryer, and, you know. Um, but back in the olden days, as people scrubbed and hung and all that other good stuff, um, so, back in my day, now that was way before my day, um, but, um, so the production era was the one that was when people first arrived. The selling era was between World War I and World War II. And then after World War II, marketing really came into vogue. That was called the marketing concept era. 
and um, there's a TV show. I think you can probably see it on Netflix. It used to be on HBO for many years, up until not too long ago. I'm going to say maybe seven or eight years ago. It was still on, as being produced on TV, and it was about Madison Avenue. Uh, the name Mad Men comes from the fact that the Silicon Valley of advertising was Madison Avenue in New York City. That was the epicenter of all the ad agencies. And um, because, again, you had all, all these GIs coming back from World War II and all of them building up families, all of a sudden the population started to explode. And, and now you had all these different brands of coffee and cigarettes and sodas and automobiles, and, and you had to differentiate one from the other. So advertising all of a sudden played a huge role in that era. Um, and that went really from the 50s to the 70s. And again, Mad Men coming from the fact that they were in Madison Avenue, again, the epicenter of the marketing world back then. And they were also a little crazy. <laughs> They're extremely creative people, but they had an edge to them, let's just say. Um, now, there are three components the book's going to point out, and it's important to know for your quizzes. Um, about the marketing concept era, again, 1950 to 1970s. Um, one is the customer orientation. How, which target market are we going after? Service orientation, because now you've got, like, multiple, for example, multiple brands of cars, and the quickest way to get somebody alienated from your brand is not to not be able to fix their car, right, or not be able to fix their washing machine. So. Service orientation became very important, and then correspondingly, profit orientation. Uh, fourth is the emerging mobile on-demand marketing era, and that really started around 2000. I mean, it existed a few years before that, but really came into vogue during the dot-com era. Um, um, again, roughly 2000, and that is what we still deal with today in, in a large sense. Um, we have, I mean, I walked across a parking lot, probably took me 15 minutes, but in that 15 minutes that I walked from one end to the other, um, I was able to order something from Amazon and I was able to order my carry out dinner that night. Sushi, if you must know. <laughs> um, but you get, you know, I mean, the concept that you you have all this right at your fingertips, and I look at this desktop computer, provides some nice functionality and some capabilities, but the, the, as far as horsepower, computing horsepower, the cell phone I was carrying in my hand probably has just about as much. Um, and, you know, there's so many things, I mean, I can order products from Australia if I wanted to, you know, I mean, on my cell phone, you know, so there's that. Um, and then the other thing, uh, we'll wrap up this lecture. Um, but take a look at in the book of something called the four P's. Now the four P's also, that will be something that gets tested. Um, that's product. You gotta have the right product. I mean, it's, you're wasting, you spun your wheels completely if you put something out to market that's not in, de excuse me, in demand or will be in demand. You have to price it properly, that's the P number two. Because if you've got competition and you're a lot more expensive, you better have a good way of justifying it. Place, um, it needs to be appropriate for your audience. Again, demographically, tastes are different. Some people like spicier foods, others don't. Um, you know, you don't sell uh, winter coats in South Miami Beach. You know, it just and vice versa. Bikinis are not a hot seller up in Nome, Alaska. Um, so <laughs> put it in the right place and do the proper promotion for it. Okay, promote accordingly. That's the four. fourth P. The again to review: product, price, place, promotion. And we will. We're at the ten minute mark, so we'll wrap it up here and go through the rest of the announcement section. We'll see you on Zoom.